So planning is always has to be strategic. We always require our restorative uh, aspects to be considered first. From our patient selection, patients need to be generally healthy and of good conduct. They need to understand the biology of the process that they are intending to go through, as well as all the options that they are available to them. The aesthetic and restorative planning becomes critical because this is where we design the patient's smile, set the incise and height, the occlusal plane, and also determine in terms of classification, are they going to be an FP1 to FP3 type of case? Are we going to have natural and prosthetic gingiva? And how are we going to explain to the patient how they need, uh, what is their adaptive requirements to such a prosthesis over time? Once we have established the restorative planning component, this is when we look at our cone beam CTs, and I think this is essential for implant planning in this day and age, in order to establish the required uh, volume bone available within the specific sites selected for implant placements. And I say it with quite a critical eye, the specific sites selected by the restorative plan, not by our surgical plan. And I think also when you're talking about CVCT assessment and looking at bone, uh, in terms of the, the surgical protocol, because we end up looking at space creation. So the bone that's currently available is not necessarily the bone that will be utilized, yep. depending on the prosthetic space. And I think, I'm sure you guys can notice, Fahim is obviously speaking quite a quite a bit on the aesthetic and restorative component, but which is important. And it does make me feel a bit more reassured that the surgeon understands and appreciates the role that the restorative component plays in the surgical success ultimately. Because ultimately when it becomes the immediate prosthesis, you want, from a, a restorative perspective, you want the ideal platform to have loaded and placed this prosthesis with minimal complications, if, if, if anything, nothing. The most important aspect here is that obviously the implants need to be rigidly splinted so we can't afford this prosthesis to fracture in the immediate load phase which will be in that three months of implant integration. No cantilevers so definitely a shortened arch that prosthesis needs to cut off at the most terminal implant and occlusal management is fundamental to avoid interferences allowing occlusion to be balanced uh, and protected at the same time and then looking at your material selection, uh, the strength and the integrity of this material to withstand function. Obviously, these patients have come from either terminal dentition or parafunctional habits and are going into an unforgiving environment of implantology. Uh, parachutes are needed to, to protect these implants. Not often discussed enough, uh, but classifying the prosthetic design at the onset is important of whether we're going to be working with papilla or long contacts or a pink prosthetic interface because the most tragic outcome that can occur is image in the center. Uh, if there's not enough prosthetic space available and we end up ridge lapping, uh, hygiene becomes an issue and obviously aesthetic phonetics but in that case your implant integrity long term is compromised. And remember the patient also wouldn't understand the type of restoration they're going to have if you didn't plan it beforehand. So patients may not be happy uh, having a plastic or porcelain pink teeth and gums overlapping their natural gums. I think again, patient-centered was good practice.